Hey everyone, so we have another kiln opening. This is my second kiln opening in December. Actually, probably gonna be the last kiln opening of the year, just because Christmas is not even two weeks away and I usually take between Christmas and New Year's off. Hard to imagine, I know. So um, I'll probably be working, but I don't think I'll be glazing again till next year next year so it's the last one of the year Woohoo! i love i love saying that i know it never gets old um so let's talk about what's in this kiln so there's a ton of christmas ornaments in this kiln um some christmas gifts and a few pieces that are going to be in my holiday sale which will be happening as soon as i get this unloaded i put luster on top of everything that needs to have luster on it and then i put it back in the kiln and do another firing then i take it out and then i check everything over because that's that's the process right after it comes out of the final firing I inspect everything and if it passes muster you know if it's good enough I will then photograph it and then list it which that usually takes a full day onto itself so I'm thinking my holiday sale will go up I wanted Monday but I think it's gonna be Tuesday Wednesday of next week um, so if you've been waiting to try to get some of my pieces this is your best chance now I do put this um, holiday sale up every year and premium members of clayshare.com get first dibs that's one of their perks that's a perk of being a member so they know about the sale first then it goes public and I do other sales usually I do a spring sale like sale cleaning out studio but um, this one is is really uh, I try to get it done in time for Christmas so that everybody can get themselves something if they want all right so what's in this kiln uh, a few tests a lot of uh, under glazes that I've applied and then wiped back um, actually a lot of collaborative pieces with my daughter she painted some ornaments we spent two days together in the house having an ornament painting party it was really fun if you have children in your life I highly suggest you make ornaments for them get some under glazes and then just let them sit down with the under glazes now I use speedball speedball under glazes are non-toxic so you don't have to worry about it. Even if they eat it, it's okay. But don't let them eat it. You don't you don't want them eating the underglaze. But they paint it on just like just like paint. And then you put a clear glaze on top. I use a zinc-free clear that I make here in my studio. It's my clear 2167 and the recipe is on clayshare.com under resources so you can find that recipe there and you just let them paint it and then you glaze it and you fire it it's easy and so I've got a ton of her ornaments in here I made some things which she fell in love with she wanted to do the color on and I let her do that I've got a great big snowflake serving dish that I'm really excited hopefully that turned out well some teapots well actually a teapot that I carved and a jar and what else a few other goodies so I guess you just have to wait and see so let's get started and open up this kiln oh my goodness so it's a surprise kiln opening um, so I wasn't gonna do this first thing this morning I was gonna wait and do it this afternoon but I am going to see the movie frozen 2 with my daughter and I'm releasing a wild frog a spring keeper frog and before we go and because we rescued the spring peeper frog um, my daughter fell in love with him and we can't keep him so we have to go find a replacement in the form of a leopard gecko so more on that to follow but we're gonna do this kiln opening it's gonna be a little fast hi everybody for coming in so um, you know these are all filmed live in my studio here on Clayshare for my um, for Clayshare Facebook but also I filmed them for tv.clayshare.com my youtube channel and for vimeo so this is like everywhere and i'm pretty excited we're gonna pop this kiln and unload it it's a little hot hi everyone all right so it's a little hot i wanted to wait but i don't think i'm gonna have time to wait so this is very much a do what i say not what i do situation the kiln is 159 degrees it should be a little cooler and uh i'm gonna do it because I don't have time to wait so let's do it let's do it we don't have time 159 yeah that's a little too hot and I'm wearing black uh, black is not the best choice for a pottery studio and I'm going out later so I think I'm gonna switch quickly and put on my apron while I'm thinking about it because I don't want to actually ruin my nice clothes you know we have studio clothes and we have nice clothes 
I know, surprise kiln openings, woohoo! Well, the reason I'm doing it today is because this evening, after we get back from movie and all the extra stuff that's going to happen with that, I have to do luster, I have to luster a ton of pots and then load up that luster firing again and fire the kiln again tonight. So I don't have, I don't have any time to wait. Not if people, not if y'all want pots before Christmas. No, no, no. All right, aprons on. I can get as dirty or dusty as I want. Let's go, let's do it. Um, so this was a cone five firing. Here's the cone pack from it. So I fired this to cone five medium speed with a 10 minute hold on the end. And you can see this is cone four, nice and melted. This is cone five, very nice, that's perfect. And cone six, just starting to bend a little teeny tiny bit. So I think that's perfect. That's really consistent for me with my firings. And we're gonna put this over here and keep, keep, it, keep it for later. Oh yeah, and uh, Merry Christmas because this will be the last kiln opening, I think, until uh, till next year. Last one of the year. Let's see what else we have in here. We have a lot of stuff. We got lots and lots of pots, and like I said, it's a little hot. So, um, got a couple cups from um, with from my line of Sandbow decals right here. So this is my retro floral design in black, and this is the jungle leaves in black. And on top is my Chun Blue, and on the inside. And I'll be putting Mother of Pearl Luster on all of it, the whole thing. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't need to, but I'm really feel, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the luster. So we're, we're probably going to do that to everything. So these I can touch. My concern is down in this kiln is a bunch of Christmas ornaments my daughter and I made. So they're very tightly packed and that retains heat for a very long time. So I have a lot of shelves that don't have much space, not a lot of airflow. So normally when I fire my kiln, I would, I could honestly wait another day before I unload, but it's already been two days. This kiln retains heat like crazy. What else do we have in here? Oh, a sweet little leaf dish. So the glazes on this, it's actually a two-step process that you're seeing here. This is Georgie's Interactive Pigments in Autumn Foliage. And so you brush the pigment on the entire thing and then you wipe the excess away. And then I put two coats of their eggshell wash, it's a, br a brush on glaze, two coats of that. And that really, really brings out all that texture and detail. And look, little feet. I think I did this in a live broadcast and then there's my stamp, but of course you could sign it. So this is just a sweet little leaf dish. It's very organic because I cut around the leaf. I know it's, it's, it's a surprise kiln opening. Everybody's very excited because I'm, I'm here. I didn't tell you, I just did it. So this was a sweet little thing. How nice is that? That's, I'm happy with this little guy. And it's a great example of using those interactive pigments from Georgie's who, uh, Georgie's is gonna be sponsoring our January giveaway. We're gonna be giving away, I think two sets of the interactive pigments and two sets of the tie dye glazes. So that's awesome, that's coming. That'll be January. December I'm giving away, cause you know, it's still December. It's just stuff I've got that I've been given by, by people over the years. Uh, well, I should say over the year. It's gonna be a sample set of Amico glazes. So, and those were donated by Clayscapes Pottery. And then one of um, our dear friends of Clay Share, Jody Batson donated some tools. I'm gonna be donating a set of cutters. So it's pretty cool. The sale I think is gonna be, everybody's asking when my sale will be. I have to unload this, luster it, fire it again, check everything over, sand everything down, photograph everything and list everything. So that's, we're looking at Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm thinking, it, if, if I get everything done in time. Okay, so this is how, oh, let me show you. Sometimes when you're firing bigger, tall pieces, your cone pack is gonna sit too low and you might want your cone pack to sit higher. I like my cone pack to sit even with my thermocouple. So what I do, I'm gonna put my cone pack back on it, is I just take some old kiln furniture or broken bits of kiln shelf that I have in the studio and I just stack them on each other and put the cone pack on it so that it's even with my thermocouple. That way I know the temperature my thermocouple is saying is where my cone pack is reading 
that heat work and that's really what I want so this right here is what I do when my shelf isn't tall enough because I've got tall pots on the top so that's a little that's a little studio tip for you a little a little bonus on top of uh, where should I keep these guys down here a little bonus on top of the kiln opening okay so this is a little sweet thing and I'm not gonna talk about it because it's gonna be a class <laughs> I do like that and there's a thing I can't show you uh, no but I can show you Nomi's goodness gracious little Nomi's this Nomi class has taken off like crazy the gnome it's called the gnome ornaments and this is one I made using my little mushroom decals so that you can see that little sweet mushroom there we go so cute little mushroom right there and he's gonna get mother of pearl because I'm pearling everything so someone's saying looking at the cone pack at first looks like a piece of pie I I could get it I I always think everything looks like food so I mean <laughs> right <laughs> alrighty uh, so here's a couple things my daughter painted I made and she painted this is the snowman luminary and this is the Christmas tree luminary so she wanted to paint these it wouldn't have been the way I would have glazed them but she wanted to do it so I let her do it and this was my holiday rolling pin and she used speedball under glazes to hand paint every element even the stars look at that even the stars on the even the stars on the Christmas tree I can't even and then this was the last thing she did after about a hundred ornaments she was done she was like can I just do bands of color and I said yeah you can do bands of color so these are our our families and I'm really happy that she was interested enough to do the color I was gonna do Georgie's interactive pigment in sand and surf and then they're super clear on top so I was going to make this kind of a green coppery color and she wanted to hand paint the deer and everything so I I let her because this is what we do as teachers and parents we encourage you know everyone in our life to express themselves right and it might not be what we would do but we don't want to stop them from being creative I never want anybody to think oh well that's not how Jess would do it it doesn't matter how I'm going to do it. It matters how you want to do it. So I just want to encourage that and the love of making and creating in anybody, not just my children, but the world, everybody, the world, the world. I want the world to make fabulous pots. So this is going here along with the snowman. And believe me, there is a ton more of her painting artwork in here because she did a bunch. Okay, so my throwing a vase using underglaze decals so these are my retro jungle underglaze decals from Sam Bao Studios this design is was out of stock as of last week but they're getting more put it on in green and then speedballs pine green matches perfectly this is going to get luster I'm lustering this vase so I show you how to throw the vase and then I show you how to put the decals on and then how to add the volume so it turned out really nice I'm very pleased with it and we will be lustering this tonight and then the other one in there that I have is with my mushrooms same exact same exact idea right where we used the cylinder form we threw on the wheel and we then applied the decals to it and then we added our volume there's the bottom sign is it right there you can see my signature and so we added our decals and then we volumed out and then after we trimmed it we went ahead and put black under glaze but I, I showed you how to do it in the class so you got it and just clear on the inside nothing nothing fancy just simple I think this little mushroom guy I am gonna put mother of pearl luster on the whole thing but I'm probably gonna put it in my kitchen for some reason I want the mushrooms in my kitchen and so I can put utensils in it so someone just asked me what lustering is so luster is an overglaze enamel you put it on after you glaze fire your pieces mother of pearl is one that you put on and it creates this iridescent surface so it has the shimmer and beautiful luster now luster also comes in gold white gold so you can get yellow gold white gold 
Um, sometimes white gold is called platinum, brass, sometimes you can get colors. It just depends on the manufacturer of the luster. So it's another firing, it's another surface decoration treatment, right? We have uh, a lidded jar. So this is one, I think in my wheel throwing class, uh, I showed you how to make this jar, I sh or one very, very similar. And then I hand carved this pattern onto it, and I put aqua underglaze on the knob and on the, bot on the rim here. And I'm gonna put mother of pearl luster on the whole thing. Now, let's see if our lid comes off easy. It doesn't. So this is common. What happens when you fire your lid on a pot is you create a vacuum inside there, so it can be a little difficult. And sometimes if you don't wipe your lid and rim of your pot well enough, it will stick, which is not good. No, I know, isn't this sweet? This is that little fiddlehead swirly knob that I like to make. It's just a little different knob. So I gotta grab my favorite tool, my favorite tool for unsticking lids. If this is just a simple issue of the vacuum being created, the seal, then you can just do a little tap. I heard it. I'll, see how I just did that? Very gently with a dowel or any wooden thing, wooden handle, whatever you have. Tap, tap, tap until you hear it come loose. So there you go. And now look how nice that lid fits. That's like, oh, these jars almost look like little mushrooms into themselves, don't they? That lid right there. And then that surface, that design, is a Mishima inlay technique, which y'all know, I taught you that, you got that. So this one is, is awesome, we'll put this back here too. And then I have one more lidded, so I'll keep my tool. So this is a teapot, this, this is a Christmas present for my daughter, who never watches me on social media or YouTube or anything, because my daughter is too cool for that, so she will never see this until she gets it Christmas morning. So ever since she was a little girl, um, like little little, like when she was six years old, um, I've been making her pottery and encouraging her love of using pottery, and I made her a tea set when she was a little girl, like a little teeny tiny tea set and cup and everything, and this is just like grown up teapot for her. And I'm gonna luster this surface with mother of pearl, the handle and everything and the knob and all that. So someone just said, I um, have a lid that's stuck. They have a lid that's stuck and it won't come off. And so did you try tapping it? That's one thing you can do. You can also try running it under some hot then cold water. Sometimes the hot and cold water will help it release. I have seen people take Fettling knives or butter knives and go into this seam here and just wiggle 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 until they get it. Uh, I personally would not do that. Yeah, I'm going to give you close-ups of it. Close-up of the design. So this is all hand carved inlay and this teapot is porcelain and we can talk about the construction. It was thrown, although I do have a couple, I have wheel throwing, two wheel throwing and two hand building teapot classes available. So it was thrown as the body, the base, the lid, the spout, the knob. So one, two, three, four, five parts thrown and then a pulled handle that's attached and carved as well. And then you wanna see it from the top. I actually really love it from the top. Look at that. Ooh, it's so pretty. So this I'm going to give to her as her Christmas present she knows nothing about, nothing at all. And I am sure she will cherish it, but my plan is that we will have tea together in it, right? That's the plan. So now the knob, the knob's on. Like I can, I know, don't, it's okay, I'm holding it by the knob. If it released, I would have caught it because my hand's underneath. Don't panic. So the last teapot I made, I never got the lid off. It's very sad. I ended up putting it in the garden and it's just sculpture. So someone suggested if you can't get your lid off, put it in the freezer. This might take a little more work. It's porcelain. Porcelain is finicky, finicky, finicky. B mix, well, B mix is much more forgiving. 
So it's not coming off that easy. And I don't want to really rush it, so I'm gonna let it be and we'll work on this later. So we'll see, we'll see if uh, it'll come out, I hope. Or, or, or Merry Christmas, honey, I got you garden sculpture. No, that's not how it is. Oh, thank you, Linda. <laughs> yeah, so that teapot, um, I show you how to throw a teapot, I think, like that. If not, I will do it. <laughs> if, if that's not what I filmed, I will, I will do it. Um, because I think the teapot I show wheel thrown is a Japanese style teapot with the side handle. Oh my goodness, so here begins, oh my gosh, so here begins, was that funny, I pop right up from behind the kiln, like, <laughs> here's the beginning of all the Christmas stuff, oh my gosh, that we spent like two or three days painting on glaze, which, it was really fun, if you have, I tell you, it's a great way to spend time with your family, all right, I'm going to put my gloves on because it's hot, very, very hot, and I don't want to burn myself, myself, my little hannies. So these are not, this is not a, um, this is a good one to show, this is not an ornament, these are coasters. So my daughter and I made Christmas coasters one day, we came to the studio, I rolled out a slab, she rolled the texture in, and then I glazed them. So that's how it works, right? I roll out the slab, uh, she puts the texture in, she cut out the shape, and then I do the rest. <laughs> but what I really want to show here is this is Amber Celadon from Clayscapes. And if we look at the, the clay, this actually is the Raku clay I had left over from the Raku firing. This is Laguna B mix. Look at the difference. Look at the difference the clay makes. The, the uh, Raku clay is a nice, nice, nice color. It's rich and kind of toasty. The B mix is nice and bright. You can fire your Raku clay to cone five. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. You don't have to use it just for Raku. So if you buy Raku clay for a Raku firing, and you're like, what am I going to do with all this leftover Raku clay? Well, it's a really groggy clay. It's kind of very good for hand building. It's just darker, so keep that in mind. Um, and if you don't know what Raku is, Raku is another way of firing. And we won't really get into it during this broadcast, but we'll, we'll do some Raku. I think in the spring we'll be building a Raku kiln and showing you how to fire a Raku kiln. Ah! So, uh, we did a set. She did a set of these. <laughs> I did a set. Somebody did a set. We did it together. And that's what it looks like. And then, uh, actually, interestingly enough, this is the Raku clay with my chun, with my snowflake pattern on it. So you can kind of see those snowflakies on there. Yeah! Right? Drew is going to help me build. So Drew Seymour, who's watching live right now, is gonna help me um, build the kiln. We've been talking about it. And we're gonna do it in a way that's affordable. You can buy a Raku kiln, which is great, but uh, why not build one when you can save money, right? So is a Raku clay good sage fire to cone five? So is it good at cone five? Does it vitrify at cone five? Um, Drew will, Drew, answer that for me because I, I'm pretty sure that the cone, that cone five, it's good. Like, I think you're, you're fine. I haven't had any issues with it. I haven't tried making mugs with it yet, though. So, um, something to think about. Let's take another shelf out. Yeah, the, the Raku clays. Ooh, mugs. Ooh, mugs. Sorry, there's mugs down there. And, you know, it just caught my attention. So let's look at these. This is some other holiday coasters and two different glazes. Again, same clay. So two clays, sorry. So the Laguna Raku clay that I used will go to cone 12. So theoretically it's probably not vitrified at cone five or six, but I only used it for making coasters so far. And maybe I'd make planters with it. So this is the Raku clay with my Oribe glaze on it. This is, let me see if I can get my hands on these in a way. Let's just pick one. 
We only need to show one coaster, Jess. Let's put the rest down. Okay. Because my hands can only hold so much at a time, right? <laughs> Look at the difference. I don't know if you can see the difference in the tone here. Um, I think you can. I'm trying to get it really close so you can see them. This right here is the Raku clay with my Oribe. This is B-Mix with my Oribe glaze on it. So it's much brighter on the B-Mix. Um, I would say it's earthier, a little, little warmer, yellower when you put it on the Raku clay. But it's still great and I had a bunch of Raku clay to use up so why not make coasters? Coasters don't have to be vitrified. But they're glazed, so they're good. They're all good, they're good. So we made some ornaments, like I said, and I'm gonna show these because these are all made using speedball under glaze. And you know, you might think you need a lot of glazes and a lot of different colors, right? You need a lot of glazes to make a lot of different color options, but you don't. These are speedball under glazes. This is their red and pink on this mitten, and this one is their yellow, orange, and red together. And again, my daughter painted these, and she did a fabulous job. We're gonna luster Mother of Pearl these as well, but it just goes to show, you just buy some under glazes in a clear glaze, and you don't need to have a ton of glazes. The Chun Blue with the iron, it really, the Chun Blue glaze looks fabulous on white, white porcelain or an iron bearing clay is crazy good. So I've got a ton of ornaments. You wait, we're gonna go through them. Speed balls, uh, medium blue on the top. They're sky blue on the rim. That's it. So I think Speedball has 24 colors available and you can buy little sample sets and sometimes you can find their colors on sale. But really, with about 10 colors of underglaze, which are easier to store because they're smaller and they're really easy to work with, you can create so many things. You don't have to have a ton of fancy glazes. Right? Just, you know? Now, again, a little star ornament. This is Speedball Sky Blue and Sea Blue on the inside. I will show the luster. If you all are lucky, I'll do another kiln. Oh, you know what? I could be wrong. This, this might not be the last kiln opening of the year because I'm gonna luster. Maybe I'll show you the luster firing results. Maybe I'll, I'll do a kiln opening maybe for the luster kiln. It won't be ready till tomorrow or Monday to open. Let me think about it. We made a ton of these mini gingerbread guys. Uh, the colors, on them is red from Speedball, but Speedball, I'm gonna tell you honestly, I don't like their brown at all. So I use, I'm gonna come in crazy close. Maybe I'll put that up there. Can you get that in there? There you go, woo! I don't know if that'll focus on that. So let's just talk about this. This is Speedball's red, which is great, but the brown is Mako. It's just their brown. They're, that's it. Because um, Speedball's brown is not good. I don't know what's going on with it. I love Speedball, but their brown, not, not good. Yes, so because we made so many of these cutie little mini ornaments, I have to go buy a mini Christmas tree for us to put up in our dining room because one Christmas tree in our living room isn't enough. We need another one because now we have all these handmade ornaments, right? So, yes, I want to see the luster. Okay. All right, so we will do the luster opening too. Why not? It'll be educational. I can explain what glaze or what under glaze is underneath the luster. We can do it that way um, because that really affects how the luster looks, right? So we can do that. Your speedball brown is grainy, exactly. So that's what I have found with my speedball brown too. And it's very sad. So I didn't use it, I just used the Mako. And I don't know if that's because it froze or if that's a formula issue that they have to work on at Speedball. It's very disappointing because Speedball is a good company, they make a good product. But, you know, this is how it is. Sometimes things are not as good as they should be, right? And I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. I'm gonna tell you I love Speedball, but their brown's terrible. So, eh. 
what can we do about that? A um, couple other little dishes in here and then a ton more ornaments. Again, mushroom, little mushroom trinket dish right here with speedball black underglaze on the edges and then clear glaze on top. And then a incense burner or incense holder. And this is uh, Georgie's Sand and Surf with their super clear on top. So Mako does have underglazes for cone five, six. Yes, it's called their elements. Let me, let me show you. They sent me some to try. Mako, I think, really, really wants to come on board, Clay Share. And you know what? I'm willing to let them. Sorry, I had to walk out of frame. So Mako really wants to, to come on board as a sponsor for Clay Share, and I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not gonna say no. They sent me a little set, actually the brown's not in here because I was using it, of, well, what do we got, 12 underglazes? So it's called, they're fundamentals. So they're fundamentals. And it just says fragile, keep from freezing, but it's their underglazes, and I've only tried the brown. <laughs> So Christine says she tried Speedball's brown underglaze. It froze and it was grainy. And then they replaced it that was not frozen and the replacement was still grainy. Yeah, don't, I'm gonna say their brown needs some help. But Mako, so Mako wants to come on board. Oh, there it is. Nope, that's the dragon red. Did I use that? Oh, I did, wait, hold on. Here it is. Okay, I stand corrected. We're gonna go back to those little cute gingerbread men. The red in the heart here is dragon red from Mako's fundamental line and the brown is their chocolate and these are not grainy at all. Now Speedball's red I've not had a problem with that being grainy but the brown is a problem so why not give Mako a try right? And I would love Mako to come on board, and it seems like they want to come on board, so I think it's a win-win. So I'll be talking with them after the holidays, and we'll get, we'll get some stuff going with them. It isn't, yeah, that dragon red's a really nice red. It's, it's really nice. This is sea blue, kind of an ombre, starting with the sea blue from Speedball, darker to lighter. And same here. And it's just speedballs, underglaze, and sea blue. That's it. And then clear, and then clear on top. So Victoria says the white is also really good from Mako. You know, honestly, with speedball, I haven't had too many issues with their colors. I just was very disappointed in their brown. And um, I think that's the one color that's been kind of like sad, right? So Louise loves Mako. Yeah, I, I've been trying a few of their glazes. It's pretty nice. Speedball's lavender on top. They're purple. And then the bottom is, is their sky blue. Is that sky blue? No, turquoise. Turquoise blue. That's what's on that. But it's cute. The clear I am using for these is my recipe on clayshare.com. It's the clear 2167. And it's a fabulous zinc-free clear we all want zinc free clears that's something you want to be aware of when you're using underglazes and underglaze decals zinc can cause your glaze to eat away melt your underglaze a little bit or sometimes pull away so just keep that in mind and again more speedball on sweater ornaments and mittens mitten ornaments um, I've never done a class on the mitten ornaments but I always show you how to make them in my ornament party that I do on my live broadcasts. Every year around the holidays we do an ornament party, but I will, I should do a quick little class on that for next year. And the wire, yeah, let's talk about the wire. Let me get a bigger, let's, I got another bigger ornament with wire. Here we go. A little knit cap, cute knit cap. The wire in the knit cap is, I'm just going to put it so it's in the middle of my, right there, so you can see it. Can you see that? Um, the wire is nichrome wire. And these are use, nichrome wire use, letter U, right? And I um, bought these on Amazon in a little pack, and I've linked them in a class, in my gnome ornament class, so you can find the link to that, but this is really good. And uh, those of you trying to find my clear, it's a one you've got to make yourself, nobody sells it. Um, so that's, 
That's, it's easy though. It's not very many ingredients. You can do it. If you ever wanted to try making your own glazes, that would be the one to, to jump in with the little ornament. Again, these were all painted by my daughter. So the ornaments, and it's her first time painting ornaments. So if you're seeing them and you're like, I could do a better job, well, maybe you could. But that's kind of mean to say. So don't say that. <laughs> Um, this one she was so proud of, and it's not anything big or fancy. It's a little penguin, and what she was so proud of is the fact that she made a little lighter tummy. Yeah. So, yeah. It's cheap to make, right. My glaze is, is cheap and easy. And I do have a class on mixing and understanding glazes. Can I show the sky blue? So Kathleen, the sky blue is actually a underglaze. Look at that sweet little mitten, snowflake, another snowflake. But I can show you the sky blue, yeah. So on this little hat here, the bottom is a very light wash. Now these were applied as washes. I dipped it in the, well she dipped it in the underglaze and then dipped it in water and then brushed it on. That's how I do it and I taught her how to apply as a wash. Because if you do a solid opaque cover, it, it sometimes is very flat. So if you do it as a wash, especially with something with lots of texture like this, you get um, the texture showing, right? <laughs> well, she, so my daughter does draw. She's an artist herself. She draws digitally and sculpts digitally, digital sculpting. And that's her big deal. She doesn't draw. She doesn't draw like the way I do, which is on paper. Cute little dove. It was fun. It was fun, but I gotta tell you, at first I was a little like, okay, as parents, we're always trying to get things done, and I had planned to be glazing in my studio that day, not um, glazing with my child, right? How horrible does this sound? I planned to be working all day in my studio, and then she wanted to do the ornaments, and I was like, oh. Okay, and so I just switched gears and said, you know what, let's do it. So we had cookies, we had cocoa, we had fun, and we sat by the fire and painted ornaments because my dining room has a wood stove in it. So it was like, it's kind of those memories you make that you're going to have forever. It was, it, was, it was great. Oh my gosh, I got a little crazy and I don't know if I'm going to regret it or not, but... Um, Look what I did! <laughs> I put a lot of chun. Don't do this at home because it'll probably make a big, big mess. I put a lot of chun on. A lot. Ah! Ah! So, chun blue on top of my underglaze decals. Now, the chun has zinc in it, so it um, pulled, and you can kind of see a little bit through the chun where it started to pull the mushrooms a little bit but um no that's awesome so if you do the sky blue and then the clear it'll show the blue right it totally will the sky blue is a light sky blue yes it'll show it through so let's put this over here these mugs are supposed to get lustered that's the plan ah throwing a mug throwing a mug using underglaze decals right and this was the one that we did, the handles. The decals on the handle, that's the best part. And I had to sing about it because it's that good. Bottoms. So these are gonna get, these are gonna get the luster, mother of pearl luster. And then the blue ones, got some blue ones too. I did a couple green, got a couple blue. And this is Speedball's I think royal blue on top that pretty much dead matches the blue in the decal. But I love the handles. I know they came out very, very, very nice. Very, very nice. No, no complaining on those at all. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Yeah, they came out good. So I'm happy. You never know. You never know what's going to happen when you put them in a kiln. Ooh. Couple little gnomies couple little baby gnomies that are ornaments and these are minis little mini guys super cute put those over here cuz I don't I'm running out of room I'm stacking stuff everywhere what is under this more ornaments if you could see in this kiln 
There are so many Christmas ornaments. <laughs> it's to the point where I'm probably just going to start stacking them up. Oh wait, there's one dish. I'm sorry. There's one dish. It's actually the little saucer that goes with my espresso mug that's the next layer down. And this is Georgie Sand and Surf with their Super Clear. I love the way that comes out every time. I just love it. It looks good. So that, we'll see the mug later on. It's on the next shelf though. Okay, more ornaments. I tell you, we spent all, I told you, a couple days. A lot happened. Oh goodness, she did so good. Oh my gosh, I can't even. So fun. Christmas tree. Sweater mitten. So just ideas, she really had, <laughs> I had a lot of ornaments and she had a lot of color combos she wanted to try out. And she really liked painting, she painted white underglaze on this one on the whole thing and then she did the colors of the birds and the trees and the snowflakes and then this was later on when she got sick of all the detail work I love it when that happens right and then she just did a stripe of color she was like yep enough, enough of that mom I'm done because you know you can only paint paint glazes so much oh wait I'll bring this back the pattern on this yes that is my layered ginkgo pattern yeah that's what that is Oh my gosh. So I did some gingerbread men in white because I'm going to make pearly gingerbread men. So I didn't put anything on them but clear glaze. So no brown, just, well, red hearts and then clear. And then I did a big one. I might just make them gold though. I might put gold luster on the little guys. And then this big one here, um, I think it's just going to get mother of pearl. So. Do I paint or dip with the clear, Anita? So it, the clear that I made, here I'll show you. So the clear that I make, my 2167, you can dip it, but I also painted it. So I used a little Sumi brush and I painted it on. But you can dip it too. And I don't change the thickness, I don't add anything different to it. When I'm painting it, I just paint it on. You just wanna watch out you don't go too thick. But I mix up five gallon, a five gallon bucket and it lasts me a good long time and I use it for so many things. So these, oh, during our, um, during our ornament party we made this Santa and we made the snowman and she did the color. And someone just asked, Drew Seymour just asked me, do I ever make little evil gingerbread men? Well, I haven't yet. <laughs> but if I ever get around to it, I'll let you know. <laughs> But um, so far, no, no evil gingerbread men in at all. And so we just got we got some sweaters. Sweaters are fun. Sweaters are fun. There's so many ornaments. I warned you all. I told you there was a lot of ornaments. All right, let's see where we're at now. I'm gonna move some things to this next shelf. Goodness. Let's see if I can get this shelf out. I think. Is this the... No, there's another layer of ornaments. Oh my gosh. I'm like, this will be a quick kiln opening. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> because there's a lot. Oh, so I've got to tell you, there's some ornaments in here that I, I plan to make a class out of. And I just ran out of time and Christmas came. And yes, you do hear my rooster crowing if you just heard that chicken. That's my little rooster sparrow. He's about this big because he's a bantam. He's a sweet little boy. So I made some old truck ornaments. A couple different versions. This one here and then this one here. I actually like this one better. So I know I love it. Is that a rooster in your background? Yes, it's a rooster in the background. I have chickens. You guys know that. I got chickens. And then, oh wait, one more, one more. So, interesting, I painted this, not, not my daughter. So we'll, we can talk about it. <laughs> we can talk about it more critically, right? Um, this, I painted the tires black, 
This one, I didn't paint the tires black. I like no black tires better. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's personal preference. And again, speedball under glazes on both. Cute though. They came out cute. Put them in the pile. All right, stay on the side for a bit. We got just a couple little, I don't know if we're gonna keep showing all these right here. <laughs> little mitten, little gingerbread man. All right, we gotta keep going. We gotta move through the ornaments because they can get repetitious and boring. We don't want boring. This one's not though. This is one of my favorite little guys. You like the black tires. Look at this sweet little snow globe. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, there's two of them in there. Too fun, and then another round ornament. The snow globe was one of those cookie cutters that I did in the ornament party. I know, good morning if you're just joining me. I see some people are, it's a little early. Not, not too early, but just a little. All right, we gotta get through these because I gotta get, get going. Bell, another snow globe, cute, cute. So don't blink, you'll miss some coming out. Oh, what do you got over here? Santa's mitten. Had, had to make Santa's mitten. The glow, the, yeah, I think the globes were really unique. A little Santa mitten. And guess what? This is what I love about this. I made this ornament right here. That's great. And then this was that hole inside right there, that bit. That's where this mitten came from. No waste. You cut out your little Christmas tree shape and then you cut out the center and you make that ornament. But then you also get another ornament. So it's a twofer. And two furs are the best, right? And then, I didn't break it. My last one of these I broke, very sadly. My Christmas tree truck. I didn't break it! Woohoo! Um, the last one I made, I totally broke. I broke it loading into the kiln. I, I smashed it in half down here. Broke the bottom. It was a little disappointing. So this one I did all with speedball under glazes. So someone's saying it's 4 p.m. in the UK, 9 a.m. in Phoenix, and it's 11 a.m. here in Vermont. Yeah, I cover all the time zones. This, so I need to hang up my Christmas tree truck back here with my wreath so that we have all the uh, Christmas covered back there. That over there. Another little baby gingerbread man. I, I know the Christmas tree truck it was great fun to make. You know, that's that pumpkin truck, Christmas tree truck. Same truck, just you put a pumpkin in the back or you put a Christmas tree in the back. Oh, that's the bottom. Woo. Okay, we still got a few more ornaments, though. We're going to get there. We're working on it. It's, it's, ornaments take a lot of time. <laughs> Not just to glaze, but to load and unload. So these are ones I did. And I wanted to make this a class. Uh, Kathleen wants to know what color underglaze is on the truck. It's pine green is the green and the speedball's red. So I meant to make these a cute little ornament class, but you guys got this. You know what you do? You cut out a sort of house shape from a slab, add some texture that's different on the top and the bottom, and then I cut out a little heart and just slipped and scored and attached it to the top. Nothing on the back. That's it. And just red underglaze, and then I'll probably mother of pearl luster the entire thing. Simple, simple, fun ornament. And I meant to do a quick class on it, but they got made, and that's just it. They're, they're made now. Uh, same with this little girl right here. They, do, they did kind of look like cupcakes. This sweet little angel ornament, I meant to teach y'all how to make her, and I have a template for her. You can just screenshot this and work on your own if you wanna. It's pretty simple, a slab. I used a little lace for decorative parts. Cut out a little heart, stuck it on there. This I just took a coil that I drew some lines in to make her little hair. And then I drew her little face. Easy, easy, sweet, sweet. I'm gonna put a wire here to here and hang her. Super cute. Um, I can still do a clay quickie for next year, Charlotte. I think I will. You're right. So the ornaments that you're seeing, I think I will do some clay quickies. And it, they're, very, they're very quick. They're very simple. And 
I want you guys to know how to make them. And guess what? There will be Christmas next year. It's going to happen. Christmas comes once a year. So although you probably won't have time this year to get it done, you can get it done for next year. Some more mitten ornaments just never ends. So you're now a Prime member and you watch the live. Yes. Woohoo. So the Prime classes, if you go to clayshare.com at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, you'll see the live button and you can click on it there and you can watch it. Also, I broadcast it in the private Facebook group for premium members. Do I underglaze after I glaze? So I underglaze first, then I apply my glaze, and then these will get luster. All right, some more of my daughter. You guys are gonna be so sick of seeing my daughter's ornaments. Some more of her masterpieces. I made some little houses. I thought the house was cute. I thought it was just a cute shape. Played a little bit with composition. And she put the color. Wow. And she's not here to see these, but we're doesn't she doesn't need to. Alright, we're almost done. One more shelf out. Some more little tiny ornaments. A ornament ornament? <laughs> a little bulb ornament. That's a cute one. And an angel. A little little tiny lace angel. Well, I'll show you her too. Hold on, I'll grab it back. Because someone's going to say, I wish you'd shown the lace angel. Little, little, actually it's sweater knit pattern. And Valentine's Day, right? So those little cupcake houses, hmm, those would be good for Valentine's Day. You're right. Absolutely right. Oh my gosh, the last shelf. Thank goodness, because there's too many pots. Okay. Ah. Ooh, that came out good. So. The mug to match that little saucer is done. Where do we put the little saucer? That's over here. Okay. Saucer, espresso cup. Cute, right? So cute. And I used a little bit of little brick or something on there. I need to sand it down a bit. So when your stuff comes out of the kiln, often you'll need to sand your bottoms. If they have a little bit of kiln wash stuck on, they'll be rocky, but you sand it down and they'll fit perfectly. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, uh, thanks guys. Yeah, I, I love my daughter's ornaments too, but you know, she's, she's my child. So it's kind of Georgie's interactive pigment in sand and surf with the clear, with their super clear on top. And I wanted to make this look like this. I went heavier in the middle because I wanted the snow to look kind of like it was blowing. And that's how I got that effect there. But all those fabulous snowflakes. And could you see the backs of the ornaments? Sure. There's nothing happening there. <laughs> that's it. Nothing. So what do I do with the ornaments after they're done because there's nothing on them? Well, I will take a Sharpie marker or a painty pen, right? And I will write the year maybe, if I'm signing my name on it, my name. So my daughter will write her name on this and the year. So that's what we do with that. And then we let them dry. So for sanding the bottoms, I use a 60 grit sanding pad from Diamond Core Tools. Here's my little sanding pad right here. And I've got the 60. And that's what I use for after the, um, after the last firing, because sometimes you need that. And then I also have a 120, and so sometimes I'll go down to the 120 and sand with that. So that's just to take, sorry, cover your ears. I like my bottoms to be very smooth, it's a thing. And so to make those coasters, I was just asked what did I use. I used a big cookie cutter, yeah. But you should check out the class making coasters. I, I explain it all there. And you can watch it and see and make and do. And it's awesome. Uh, another mushroom, another mushroom dish. This, this, okay, this little sweet dish. And that's how I signed that right there. This I was supposed to turn into a soap dish and I was supposed to put holes in it so that the water would drain, right? I, I was supposed to do that but I didn't want to put holes in it because I loved it so much. 
I left it. So now it's just a cute little dish. And someone's, oh, how do I keep the ornaments flat when drying? Well, in the class I show you, but I will tell you, I just sandwich it between two boards and they dry all the way that way, right? And they stay dry and flat and perfect. Well, they get dry and they stay flat and perfect. Um, a couple more things. Another mitten ornament. One of the few ornaments I actually made, this little cardinal was a wooden um, kind of embellishment that I got from Michael's. I pressed it into clay and then I bisfired and then I used speedball under glaze to do the color. So that's speedball red, pine green, and sky blue. That's all that is. And I have a hole in the top because I'm going to hang the uh, from ribbon and then there's a hole in the bottom because I'm gonna hang hold on this little star so we're gonna put this little star on the very bottom so this is gonna hang from it because I thought it would be cute and that's the only one I actually really did I know this was this was fun um, and it was something that is easy to make because the pattern all came from Michaels all right, we have one big dish in here, but we're going to grab the cone pack and talk about that because we have to earn we have to earn looking at that big dish. So, this is the top, this is the bottom. Let's check to see are they even? Um, wow. Do you see how they almost disappear behind each other? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So, wow, top, bottom, top, bottom. Even firing, which is very important because I know if I put something on the bottom that the glaze is going to turn out the same as if I put something on the top. So if I use the same glaze on a, on, a, on a plate and a mug matches that, that has the same glaze on it, uh, it's on the top, so the plate's on the bottom and the mug's on the top, I know that the glazes will melt the same and look the same. Did I get one for next year? Oh, can you get one, Mom? My mom wants a cardinal ornament. Yes, Mama, you can. You can. You could have that one, I'm sure. You can get one for next year. <laughs> and then, and then the only other pot. That's the last, the last of the pots. Right here. This lovely, deep, gorgeous, look at this, serving dish. I used my snowflake pattern to get that texture in it. The Glazing, I did, I, it seems this whole kiln was me and Georgie's interactive pigment that I applied the sand and surf, wiped it back, and then put the super clear, which has zinc in it. And I know we always talk about don't use zinc um, when you use pigments or underglazes, but in this case, you want to because that's what makes it all coppery, gorgeous, awesomeness, right? So this was made with GR Pottery Forms. And I should show you how to make compacts, April. April, my dear, I did. I have a class on Clayshare, how to make compacts. I also have a class on why you should make compacts. And I also have one where I talk about using compacts in an L&L &L kiln. Um, they're kind of the same class. There's actually two classes. You should check them out. So, love that tray. Is that your Christmas gift from me? Isn't this great? So this was with GR Pottery Forms. I stacked two of their round oval forms on top of each other, draped this. I'm actually going to put the video up of glazing. I think I put the video up before of the making and everybody was like, I want to see the, see the finished. So there's the finished. At what time do I glaze them? So when they come out of the bisque firing. So when they're done that, you can glaze them. But I think you really need to see up close to get how gorgeous the interactive pigments are. And remember, their January sponsor for giveaway. So that's it, that's the kiln, we're done. Oh, ah, that's all, ha <laughs> ha. So now I am going to see uh, the movie Frozen 2 with my daughter, that's my day. So that's why I'm dressed a little nicer than normal because I'm going out on the town. Well, as much as you can go out on the town when you live in Vermont, right? And then I will luster this evening and put everything back in and we'll do a luster opening 
that may happen tomorrow night but if the kiln's too hot we will wait and we will do it on monday hopefully <laughs> let's hope i can get the lid off this right <laughs> So wasn't that a great kiln opening? I told you there was a ton of ornaments. There was a ton of ornaments. And you'll be happy to know, ah, I got the lid off. I didn't know if it would come off. You know, porcelain is a little persnickety and the B-Mix, you saw that lid came off no problem, but porcelain sometimes doesn't want to come off. So you can make this thing called lid wax and you just take whatever wax you normally use and you put a little alumina hydrate into it I believe it's a teaspoon of alumina hydrate to a pint of wax, but I will get the exact recipe and put it in the comments for you all so you have that. Um, but, and if that's it, that's it. That's the recipe, right? So the lid came off, yay. So what is the best of the kiln? Yeah, yeah, this. Well, that I made because this is a gift from my daughter. And what was the best other pots? Any one of those fabulous ornaments my daughter made. I mean, because my daughter made them, so they're perfect to me. They're the best things. And also, this isn't too bad. Like this right here. That's not too bad. That's okay. That's, that's I would say, pretty good. <laughs> All right, everyone. So thanks for joining me for this kiln opening. It was really fun. I am going to have a luster firing soon. And yeah, I think I will film it. So I, I was wrong. This was not the last kiln opening of the year. There'll be one more. <laughs> All right. So come check out clayshare.com if you haven't yet. You know, I have over 250 classes on tv.clayshare.com. We have an app. We're on Apple TV. We're on Roku. We are on Amazon Fire TV, you know, and plus our website. You can watch it there here on, on YouTube. I have the videos there. I have Vimeo videos and on Facebook. So basically everywhere. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a wonderful day and make great pots. <laughs>